Eutyches, who lived between 378 to 456 AD, had a large group of monks following him. He was sincerely committed to the Alexandrian formula of the One Nature, which Cyril coined and the Council of Ephesus upheld. Because of his ignorance, Eutyches made a false claim entailing that Christ's humanity was overwhelmed by the divinity and that Christ's humanity ceased to have real existence and as such the only nature in Christ is the divine nature. When Flavian, Bishop of Constantinople, heard this, he excommunicated Eutyches and contacted Leo, who was the Pope of Rome after Celestine passed away. Leo responded to Flavian in a letter that came to be known as the Tome of Leo. The letter elucidated the erroneous teachings of Eutyches. In combating Eutyches' faulty definition of the One Nature, Leo did not adhere to the explanation of the One Nature formula, but rather appealed to the formula of reunion and used the Two Nature formula in an exclusive manner that could be misinterpreted as crypto-Nestorian. Eutyches, feeling misunderstood, appealed to Emperor Theodosius II and Dioscoros, the Pope of Alexandria, who succeeded Cyril of Alexandria. Theodosius II convened a second council in Ephesus in the year 449 AD, co-headed by Dioscoros of Alexandria and Juvenal of Jerusalem. This was later known as the Second Council of Ephesus. In this council, Eutyches anathematized or denounced the teachings of Nestorius and Apollinarius and admitted in a written confession that he who is the word of God came down from heaven without flesh and was made flesh in the Holy Virgin's womb unchangeably and unalterably as he himself knew and willed. And he was always perfect God before the ages, was also made perfect man in the end of days. Eutyches claimed that this had been always his faith and that Flavian accused him of heresy based on this confession. Consequently, Flavian was condemned by the council as a heretic and the letter or the tome of Leo was not read. The same council anathematized Ibas of Edessa and Theodoret of Cyrus based on their Nestorian writings in which they vehemently attacked Cyril and his legacy, which has been confirmed by the Council of Ephesus in 431 AD. It is claimed that Dioscorus of Alexandria and Juvenal of Jerusalem used rather stern measures in dealing with bishops and resolving conflicts. Consequently, Leo of Rome called the Second Council of Ephesus the Robber Council. Not long afterward, Theodosius II fell off his horse and died. Marcion, a general in Theodosius II's army, succeeded him after marrying Pulcheria, who was Theodosius II's sister. Pulcheria and Marcion were more sympathetic towards Constantinople and Rome, and had little tolerance towards Alexandria, unlike their predecessor, Theodosius. As Father John Mayendorf puts it, there is no doubt, however, that Marcion and Pulcheria had definitely decided to put an end to the de facto power of the Bishop of Alexandria. For decades, the latter was able to impose his will upon the Universal Church without paying any attention to the honorary position acquired by Constantinople in the year 381 AD, that is, the year of the Council of Constantinople. The imperial couple felt the need to put an end to Alexandria's immense ecclesial power. 
The rumors concerning the use of force and violence at the Council of Ephesus II in 449 AD did not help the situation. Although the use of force and violence was common of church councils in this era. Two years after Ephesus II in 449 AD, Emperor Marcion called for the Council of Chalcedon to set aside Ephesus II and the Church of Alexandria. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified of all our future content. You can also follow our official Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. Please support this mission on Patreon. Here's also a link to the Arabic YouTube channel. Please also contact us through our official web pages if you have any questions, comments, or concerns on the content of the videos. Thank you.